Welcome back. Glad you're still with us in case you are just joining us. Karibu tena sana. This is Good Morning Kenya and we are glad that you have chosen to start your morning with us because I mean this is the only way to start your morning. We want to know where you're watching us from so do check in using the hashtag on Twitter that is Good Morning Kenya at KBC Channel 1 is our official station handle. My handle is at Jane Wamboy and my colleagues are at Doreen Arange at Sam Dublin Jaroge and at Ray Manyara. So we want to get started with the first conversation for the day and this is in regards to data protection. Given today we are marking the Data uh, Protection Day, this is a global event that is celebrated every year on the 28th of January. But what does it really mean? You know, for most of us, um, they don't even know this day exists. And yet technology is something that we interact with every single day. Can you confidently tell me that you can go for an entire day without using any form of technology? I want to know if you are able to tell, uh, talk to us on Twitter using the hashtag Good Morning Kenya. Tell us how that experience is for you. Because for most people, technology is something that we have gotten to a point where we cannot function to some extent, quote unquote, without it because of its efficiency of how it has helped make our lives easier. But all that information that we are putting out there, how safe is it? You know, is it being sold to other third-party users? Is it being used for uh, purposes that it wasn't initially intended for? Well, that is what we want to find out today and just know how we can better protect ourselves because we all have a digital footprint. Question is, how safe is it? To help us with this particular conversation, we have with us Fiona Asonga in studio. She is the CEO of the technology service providers of Kenya. All right. Karibu sana. Thank you so much Thank for having us here. Thank you for making time to be with us this morning. We appreciate you for being here. Um, do you have social media handles? Of your can, of yours can also interact with you on that platform? Yes, you do. You can reach us on uh, testpoc underscore Kenya and we shall be able to get your views and answer your questions on uh, data protection. Absolutely. And before we get to the juice of this data protection day, I want to get your very personal honest opinion about the data here in our country and issues to do with safety. What are your thoughts about that? My brutally my, honest. My very honest <laughs> and sincere opinion yeah. on uh, data today yes. is that we've made a, a, a major leap forward mm -hmm. by having the data protection law for Kenya in place, yes. the uh, Data Protection Act of 2019. Mm -hmm. It has changed the landscape. Prior to that, I was so worried because I knew Every time in this country when you enter a building, you present your ID mm. to a security guard. He copies everything into this book. He asks for your telephone number and then he always insists on a mobile number. Yes. <laughs> so you put your mobile number, your ID, your place where you work, sometimes where you stay, full names, you know, the, everything, mm -hmm. you know. And there was a time when uh, a number of Kenyans found themselves in registers of political parties they have not registered to, they are not affiliated to. Mm -hmm. Why? Because <laughs> that parties would come. Someone comes and takes a picture of that book, photocopies that book. Somehow, the information leaks because there's no obligation mm -hmm. to the person collecting that data to handle it appropriately. And so prior to that time, because the information would leak, you find you are in a party you've never probably been heard of. You don't adhere to their principles. You don't support what they stand for, but yes. you're part of it. Secondly, you'd also find uh, you're getting calls from insurance companies and you're wondering, which one is that? What business have I done with you? Yet you How did you get my details? They say, no, we have our ways. Yeah. It, the Data Protection Act has killed all that. Because today, the landscape is different. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad to uh, have, uh, that we have a government that is a bit more uh, for thinking in terms of ICT law. Mm -hmm. And they've been able to make sure that this went through and it, it took us so long. Yeah. From 2008, we've been talking about data protection. Mm -hmm. So we're coming 10, yes. 11 years yeah. after Later. that. Uh, it, was, it was about time to have it in place. Today, mm -hmm. What needs to happen is many people need to know whether they are data controllers, yes. they are data processors, because we are all data subjects. Data is all around us. Mm. You cannot avoid being a data subject. And that is why when you say anyone who can avoid having their data 
to tweet. I'm waiting to see who those yeah, individuals who can will confidently be. say that they do not consume any form of technology. So the landscape has actually changed. Yeah. And uh, what is happening is that the data processors and data controllers are not, are not realizing that there is more responsibility on them mm -hmm. than there was before. Today, as a data subject, I need to be able to sign a consent document saying, yes, I am giving you data to access KABC specifically for security purposes. Mm -hmm. eh? And it is for security and security only. That means once I've been here and uh, I've gone through whatever business I have here, Assuming I'm not on air. Today I'm on air, so everyone now knows me and has heard my name. So that is an example. But we've have, I was coming to an office, for example. Yes. That data should be used just for security, for them to know I was in, mm -hmm. where am I? In case of any incident, they know they I'm, can I, can, yeah, I can yeah. be tracked and traced and accounted for. So accountability is actually becoming the core of data protection in our space today. Mm -hmm. and, and I should be able to sign that and know that my data will not be used for anything other than the purpose for which it, it has been given. For. Now, uh, allow me to just jump in at that particular point. And now looking at the other side of the divide, and this is the population, yes. we, the Kawaida people, yes. when it comes to knowing our rights about our information, mm -hmm. from what you have seen interacting with people on a daily, even dealing with clients, what is the level of knowledge about my data and my rights and the consequences when they are violated? I think there's a lot of awareness and mm -hmm. public education that needs to happen in that space. There's a gap as is? Yes, there is a major gap and I'm glad that we have a commissioner in place, mm. a data commissioner is appointed. Yes. And uh, so she has her work cut out for her. Yes, it's a lot, but I believe she's going to be able to do it with the team that she has, she's putting together because the public ordinary Kenyans need to know to what extent do I have a right to withdraw consent, for example, the law talks about a data subject being able to withdraw consent. So I've given you consent to use my data for security purposes. I come in and for some reason I withdraw that consent. Mm -hmm. That process, how does that happen? When, when can I decide at this point I want to withdraw the consent I had given? How do I make that decision? Mm -hmm. I need to be very empowered to understand what my rights are within given spaces. Mm -hmm. Because if, if it was in a situation where I'm going for medical treatment, I'm, for example, agreeing to be part of a trial, I can actually, I have, it's easy to see how to withdraw the consent. Yes. But there's situations where, unless you really understand what you're getting involved in and what you're doing, it is very hard for you as an ordinary Kenyan, and ordinary, I'm looking at Wanjiru in the village, mm. Akini, Ateno, you know, in the village, who need to understand that, ah, I've gone, especially like uh, when uh, in the villages where we're having power challenges and people go to charge their phones at a public charging what point. Can be. Yes. So you charge your phone, messages come in and everything, all the information is exposed. Soon you realize a story or something is coming out of your phone that went to charge that had this information. Mm. So what are your rights? What responsibility do you have? And sometimes it's basic things on how do you handle your devices. Yeah. It comes back to issues of... Uh, cyber security first because security of your information starts with you mm -hmm. the law is there but at the end of the day the Dutch subject also needs to understand where their responsibilities begin and end it cannot be on just the entity that is the data processor or the data controller all right yeah. and looking at that aspect of responsibility of both parties that yes. are involved yes. you find situations where you may give consent but unknowingly you know yeah. and the other party can clearly say they gave us consent in as much as we don't have the written uh, um, tangible support to uh, support this particular claim how do you handle such a situation where one party says they didn't know that they were giving consent and the other party says they give clear and explicit consent and consent what forms does it um, does the law recognize actually the law is very clear mm -hmm. article 32 of the law that talks about giving of consent states that it should be very clear to the data subject mm -hmm. that they are giving consent. Mm -hmm. It is not something that I will come in and because I have gone through a process, I have given consent. No, we must be very clear, my explicit. dear. Explicit. It has to be very explicit. Mm -hmm. I have to know that when I enter these premises, I have given consent to one, two, three. And what some of the things in how we do our... Th our normal activities may have to change. For example, 
we may no longer be signing those books. By of virtue entry. of signing, you have given consent, even though you don't know. Because we do no, it no, because no. It may, it, when you're entering a building... Actually, it's going to have to change. When you go yeah. to Europe and you're entering a secured, a secured environment, you don't put your data in a book where there's a lot of other people's data. You will not even know who else came in. Mm -hmm. You will not even know that there are other people in that building. You are given a paper, single leaf paper, with clear terms on it and conditions of your access mm -hmm. that you append your signature, your name, and your details to. We can no longer be using those books. So question, the way we have things operating here, the signing of those books, writing your name, ID number, time you, start, you entered the building, phone number, and where you're going to, by virtue of doing that, is that giving consent to this particular holder of this information? If you, you know, what, me, what misses in that whole process is the fact that you're, you, you're never told while we're collecting the data. Yes. There has to be someone to explain to you, to tell you, I'm taking your data for security purposes, and like this, like this, because that is all that shit normally will have. Mm -hmm. huh? And so you are agreeing to write it, but because you are never explained to, you'll find there are places where, because I go into those buildings all the time, they yeah. even tell me, don't write. So I keep asking myself, okay, I've not written, I've gone in. If something happens inside here, who accounts for me? <laughs> you know? You know? Why? Because even the person collecting, handling that, does not understand why they do it. Yeah. And, and because they don't understand, they don't explain clearly why they're doing it. But, and there has to be that conversation. So that process, that process of letting you know, we are taking your data for these purposes. You'll notice on most of the, in fact, I think all the mobile operators in this country today, mm -hmm. for any service, they'll tell you, we are taking your data for these purposes. Mm -hmm. And you, do you agree? Or don't, or don't don't agree. Yeah. Most applications ask you, do you agree or Loud, don't agree? Yeah. And in the technology space, there's a lot of that. But the data is not just technology data. Mm. There's a lot of other data being collected in other spaces. Yes. That is not necessarily technologically related. Yeah. That still falls under the Data Protection Act. Information, in whatever form, is data about you an entity or just something you know yeah and then again that is why i you know ask that question when you give consent not knowing you're giving consent and yet the other party can clearly say they gave consent by virtue of writing so again that communication clearly is a problem there's going to be very clear regulations yeah. that come in from the data commissioner's office that will be very specific about some of these things mm -hmm. so it's eventually it's going to be very clear and there will be no confusion about it well because if my data has been picked from you and it has been given to an insurance firm and i follow up and i say no you guys keep cold cold call, call, calling me cold call, call, calling me mm -hmm. And calls. Yes, and uh, I've told you I'm not interested, but you keep doing it. Mm. Please let me know where you get my data from. And I take action, legal action. They'll have to prove where they got the data from. Yeah. Eventually, if it does come back to you and you did sell my data to a third party, sorry, you'll have to pay the price for it mm -hmm. because I never gave consent for my data to be used for any third party communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, looking at the state of our country, given we have the data protection um, law in place, what are your biggest concerns about the safety of uh, the privacy of our information in this time? Let us start by risk factors, the fact that do we even understand the risks that are involved when it comes to the safety of our data? I think Kenya has got a very robust technical uh, uh, community mm -hmm. that has got very strong technical skills when it comes to cyber security and a lot has been done and I would just like to acknowledge the efforts of uh, CSICT, CS Interior for the effort they've done to make sure we have a well-trained capacity and, and uh, capacity built and empowered cyber security police force yes. and that has been in place for the last uh, almost five years now. And that has contributed significantly to our efforts to be able to keep the cyberspace secure. Mm -hmm. The challenge, again, boils down to individuals, individual awareness. And for this, it's going to have to be a collaborative approach between government, private sector entities, civil society, creating awareness to individuals on their rights and responsibilities in as far as the cyberspace is concerned. Mm -hmm. There is those who go in and want to use the cyber platform for popularity. 
And so they don't care what they put there. They put mm -hmm. everything and anything and all manner of things. But at the end of the day, when you think about it, that kind of exposure, how does it help to keep you safe? How does it keep your data safe? So it's, it's really a call, individual calls that people have to make on how they want, what personal data they want to protect, mm -hmm. what they want to be in the public domain. But the law is giving you an opportunity to make sure anything identifiable about you is protected. Okay. So law, law, the law is always going to be there. Mm -hmm. Whether you adhere to it or not is up to you. If you're comfortable, you know, if you're comfortable leaving your house open, and the thieves can walk in any time and help themselves and shop and carry whatever they want, it is your prerogative. Yes. Nobody will force you to lock your house. But please don't go complaining to the police officers that I was robbed. And yet you left your house open. And yet you let everybody come in. You know, the windows, are doors, everything. Anyone can pass anywhere and pick whatever they want. Yeah. And feel free, feel to, free enter. to Yes. <laughs> so when you, when, you, when, when you choose to be feel free to enter, yeah. you have no business telling the police I was robbed and my house and doors were open. Mm. It doesn't make sense. Now comes in the role of applications in this day and time. We are living and mostly looking at fintech because they are the ones that are said to be ungoverned, ungoverned rather, and they don't have laws that regulate how they operate. Um, looking at these applications and the responsibility to you as the user, and because most of the time they are usually a means to an end. Yeah. They're the middleman. Looking at their, their responsibility in terms of protecting your information and the interest of the uh, one who's out, the business person who's out to make money. How are they governed, or how do they? How are they governed? Looking at the data protection laws in our country. Okay, first of all, I start by saying the fintechs are not ungovernable, and that's not that they are not governed. Mm -hmm. The issue with fintechs is they have to have two regulators, mm. one from the finance sector and from the ICT sector, and they have to adhere to regulations on both sides, yes. which they do to be able to operate. Otherwise, they wouldn't work for in either Many way. Many of them have been blacklisted even. When they are blacklisted they because they have, not, they have not actually adhered to the standards that the regulations on both sides are setting. Okay. But the proper fintechs and the more established fintechs and PESA for example mm. adheres to both ICT regulations and finance regulations. Mm -hmm. They have to to be able to serve us properly. Yes. And, and so they are, govern they are very, very governable. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to data protection, the law is very clear. They can only collect information for the purposes of the transactions that they are handling. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. You cannot collect for more than that. Mm -hmm. eh? and, and so this business where there are fintechs that uh, uh, individuals own money and they start accessing your contact information and calling people random and everything, people. Ran, uh, random people, they don't know who yeah. these are, that nonsense needs to stop. And what because are the consequences of such? The penalties are very clearly stipulated in the data protection law. And I think the minimum penalties, if I'm not wrong, is about five million or uh, a year in jail or something like that for being able for, for, for not adhering to the laws and, and uh, selling third party information and, and breaching the data protocols that uh, are, will be put in place. So by virtue of some of these institutions picking numbers from your contacts contact list on your phone and calling them without your consent that is illegal according to the it's data a violation it's, it's of a violation rights. it's a violation of the data protection act first mm -hmm. of all because unless in the consent form when you're taking on the service they state they state the clearly that mm -hmm. we shall access your contact information if you do not honor your obligations of paying this loan by this date mm -hmm. unless that is stipulated they are in breach of the data protection act and if if they did that to me mm -hmm. ah i would quickly want to go and claim damages use the court process let them pay for the lawyer let them you know let us let us get this act in, tested and tried yes so that then we can see whether it really fits our environment or not because until we start going through legal processes mm -hmm. then we will not be very sure and very clear where the loopholes and gaps are but they should know from the on from the time that the act was passed calling contacts of individuals because you they, you gave them along is illegal it's illegal yes unless you have stated that before onboarding them now with looking at that particular uh, part of this conversation how then do we ensure that the public understands what they're getting themselves into when it comes to awareness on legal terminologies and what they really mean because the fine print is where the devil is. Many people don't read those terms and conditions that come along with these applications. 
we are going to have to first of all develop a reading culture. <laughs> we must <laughs> read. read there. We must read. We must read that those terms and conditions. Yes. I normally, for me, I take time. It's cumbersome, but I take time to read mm. that final details because there is where the devil is hiding. Mm -hmm. If you don't read, you'll find yourself signing up for something that just doesn't work for you. So we must take time and read those terms of conditions of all the applications that we are onboarding to. And if the application does not state, and if possible, print the version that you are agreeing to. Print it. Keep it. If they change their terms and don't update you mm -hmm. so that you can quit, Early enough, then, the my legal. friend, you go and claim damages. We need to begin to make use of our legal system properly and make use of the acts that have been passed. Because when we don't do that, and I know Kenyans like to sue, <laughs> you know? especially where they think they're going to make a million plus. Yes, yeah. Well, data protection is one of those things. Because how do we quantify the loss of individual's reputation, the disturbance and nuisances that come with mm. cold calls and things that do not make sense to you. It's just that sometimes we are being polite and we don't take legal action. But I know that there are, there are Kenyans out there who would want to have uh, class action suits mm. and there are going to be several of them in the data protection space. If only we knew... Our if rights. someone can take time to understand yeah. it and know their rights. Yes. Yes. Again, again, that also boils down to public awareness yes. when it comes to the consumption yes. of this information. Remember, we're talking about the, uh, data protection today, given it's the Data Protection Day. It is the day where we get to just step back and look at ourselves when it comes to protecting the information that we put there on the digital platform. We want to take a break, but we'll be right back to continue with this conversation. Keep sending in your feedback. We'll be addressing them after this break. Stay with us.